An equation is always a mathematical statement that something equals something else. That's why an equation always has an equal sign. An equation can be very simple or it can be very complicated. The ones we'll look at today won't be quite as hard. They'll look like these, with only a single letter and not even a square or a cube to worry about. Two important things to know about equations is what an equation is not if you want to really understand what it is. First, an equation is not simply a phrase or a thought or an algebra expression by itself. In words, a phrase is something like up a tree or in the other car. In algebra, a phrase or expression would be something like x plus 3 or 20 divided by x. Expressions or phrases say something but not very much. They're incomplete, and since they don't make a complete statement, they can't be true or false. An equation is not like a phrase or expression. Rather, it's like a complete sentence when you read it in words. Because it's a complete statement, an equation can be true or false. You're right, a false equation isn't worth much, so we prefer the other kind. A second important thing to know about what an equation is not there's something that looks a lot like an equation, but isn't. It has an equal sign, it's a complete statement, a sentence, and it's even true. And there's the trouble. It's too true. It's true no matter what value x has. If x is 1, it's true. If x is 2, it's true. If x is 3, it's still true. That doesn't tell us a thing about x. We call this kind of statement, which is always true, an identity. An identity is different from the equations we'll be studying here, like this one. This one has an equal sign. It's a statement, a sentence, and it can be a true statement. But it's not true for every value of x. If x equals 1, this equation is true. If x doesn't equal 1, it's false. So x has a value, one correct value. X means something here. We can use this equation to learn something about X. To be sure you've got it, let's say that another way. You can't solve an identity because there's nothing to solve. Your answer can't be wrong. You can solve an equation because it has a right answer. In fact, equations are for solving. An equation is really a question looking for an answer. And the question is, what is the true value of x, or y, or q, or whatever letters you happen to use? We want to learn how to answer that question. Why? Because every equation started off as a real problem in the real world that needed an answer. When those problems were translated from words into algebra, what did they become? Equations. Our task is to learn to solve equations. How will we go about it? Backwards. First, we'll pretend we already have an answer, and then we check it. In this equation, we have the answer 3. Let's see how to check it. Before we begin, if you have trouble with this checking procedure, you'll want to review Module 3 on substitution or evaluation. If we pretend that x equals 3, we can substitute 3 for every x. Then we can simplify the expressions in the order we already know, starting inside the brackets as always. And what does that give us? A statement that 4 equals 18, which we know is wrong. So we know that our value for x, 3, is incorrect. We also know that the statements or equations we wrote to check our answer were false, based on the incorrect notion that x equals 3. Let's avoid writing false statements by using a special symbol whenever we're testing or checking an answer. To emphasize that until we're done testing, the statement is really the question, does this equal that? Testing is a very simple process, and it works with harder equations like this example. 
Even though we don't know how to solve equations like this yet, we can test whether a particular answer is right or wrong by substituting. In this case, we replace x with a 2. Follow our recipe for simplifying expressions, and we end up with a true statement. Four minus 10 plus six equals zero. So x equals two is a solution. By checking every answer before we accept it, we never have to leave an incorrect solution for any equation. But we don't know how to narrow our choices to correct answers yet because we've been too busy so far taking any solution, testing it by substitution in the original equation, and checking the answer. We can find a way to identify correct solutions by looking at an additional part of the process. If we can turn our original equation into a simpler equation, we can see the solution. How do we do that? What can we do to an equation to make it simpler? Many things, just as long as we keep a balance. That's what an equation is all about, balance. The weight, or the value, on one side, x minus 3, equals the value on the other, 5. What if we add exactly the same thing to both sides? That's right, the equation will still be in balance. Let's do it with our equation. Try adding 3 to each side. Why 3? There's a good reason. Watch what happens next. Negative 3 and positive 3 give 0, which disappears from the left-hand side. And suddenly, we have a solution. Substitute 8 for x in the original equation to check it, and you'll see it's right. How did that happen? We used a basic rule for solving equations. Let's look at two of them. First, rule 1. Add the same number or subtract the same number on both sides. Now. Notice something about our last problem. As soon as we had nothing but x on one side and nothing but numbers on the other side, the problem disappeared. The equation was so simple we could see the answer. Now, take an equation like this. How can we solve it? By getting all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other. Just like we did with the negative 3 in our simple example, Let's move the negative 1 to the right side. How? By picking a number that will remove it from the left side. Were you thinking a positive 1? And adding it to both sides to keep that balance. On the left, it immediately gives 0. On the right, it stays. But notice, what started out as a negative 1 on the left ended up as a positive 1 on the right. That's an observation worth remembering. And a positive 1 added to the negative 7 makes negative 6. Now we want to move the positive 2x in the other direction, to the left. How do we do it? Same way. We find a number that will remove a positive 2x, namely a negative 2x, and put it on both sides. The positive 2x disappears on the right and reappears as a negative 2x on the left. Can we always move a term that way? Always. And the moment we have all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other, we can see the solution, and the problem disappears. Test the solution by substituting negative 6 for every x. It works. If you don't quite get moving terms, you may want to review Module 2 on like terms. If you're feeling ready, pause the player and try this one on your own. Remember, get all the x's on one side and all the numbers on the other. When you have your answer, start the player again and we'll compare answers.